Uh, I worked with Marie Felton for, for many years. She was killed this year in, in Homs. Um, our job was to actually go there and, and, and not follow the reports that we've seen on the social media, but was to actually go there and, as Marie said, bear witness. So this is, we can <coughs> come at it from a slightly different angle. Um, and bearing witness in Syria actually meant that I'd, I'd already been expelled from Syria a number of times for various offences in the past. Um, so I was absolutely no way able to get a visa to the place. So we went in the illegal route, which involved a lot of um, dodgy arms dealers, midnight cross across minefields. Um, and literally we, we snuck in and out of the Assad lines for three days. Um, we were totally reliant on the, the opposition and the activists for our welfare and for our safety. I mean, walking around Syria at that point when uh, Baba Amra was our destination, when it was being shelled and, and under siege, we would have got nowhere without the help of the activists and the people who were using social media to, to highlight what was happening. But for us as Western journalists to go in and actually get to the centre of the story, you know, we were getting so many reports from Hans um, and Baba Amra, but there were also, you know, pro-government people taking the information, putting different soundtracks on it, different messages and putting it up, and the whole YouTube social media situation can get confusing. Our, our aim was to get to the, the centre of the action where this was taking place. Um, extremely difficult because obviously we, we, we stand out like sore thumbs in this situation. There were army patrols everywhere and it took us three days I think to travel 20 kilometres. That was on motorbikes in the back of trucks and in, in, in trunks. We reached the outskirts of Babaramra and the situation became apparent just from, from watching from the outside what was happening, there was 20, 20 hour a day barrages, ceaseless, ceaseless um, shelling, mortar and machine gun fire, and we made the decision to go in to actually report from the inside of Babaramra. This involved a three kilometre crawl through a tunnel, which popped us up in the middle of the Assad forces lines, and then we had to, we kind of had to go under heavy fire to the centre, of Bamara, Baba Amra, and that was purely to, to actually bear witness and not rely on outside information. Um, my colleague Marie would, would not work with any second-hand information unless she saw it and witnessed it and was there and I shot it. It wasn't, you know, we would not report second-hand information. And that was, I think, the, the most difficult trip was Syria. Um, it ended up with Marie's death when we, um, the house we were in was shelled. It was a media centre, you know, the people in Baba Um I mean, they, 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 our lives were saved by the activists. There, there was no separation between the, 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 call me the traditional media and the new activists. You know, we all had one job, and that was to report on the ground directly what was happening. <coughs> And when Marie was killed, I mean, these people, you know, people laid down their lives to get the message out, uh, as Marie said, to bear witness. But, you know, obviously a price of that, I was blown up and lost a few bits, and Marie was killed, Remy Oshlitz was killed. But that is the role, I said, the, the, the more traditional media is not to report, you know, it's, it, to me it's a crime to report second-hand material. You go to the spot, you push, you push, you push. Till you get to the heart of the story, and then you start writing. You, you don't, you don't listen to second hand. You don't, you don't listen to tweets and take them as genuine. You go there, you witness, you photograph, and you report back.